a very good afternoon. Basically, there are many queries how to do an iris claw. So I'll be uh, skipping a few slides. Um, so I just thought I will uh, uh, talk about my journey in iris claw eyeballs. So what extra workup is needed? Basically, nothing much. The routine cataract workup uh, with uh, my uh, uh, importance to the size of the pupil and if any presence of any uh, uh, PI if present, then assessment of the sulcus is very important before proceeding with the iris claw because sulcus eyeballs are the time-tested ones. And indirect ophthalmoscopy is a must to uh, detect any peripheral retinal degenerations if present, barrage them. The second query is, is a VR setup needed? There's no need for a VR setup. Uh, routine anterior segment surgery with our FACO machines with a good anterior vitrectomy is what is enough. I again stress on this point, I always say, Doing an iris claw without a good anterior vitrectomy is a crime. Never do. Uh, never go ahead with a, a claw eyeball without doing vitrectomy. Now, what case should I select for a claw eyeball? It's a simple answer. Any case of aphakia with a good iris tissue support have with an absent sulcus. The pupil size, even in that case, about 5 to 6 uh, mm pupil, even that iris is sufficient to place an iris claw eyeball. Um, the indications, I divide it like a planned indications where you have uh, subluxated lenses and subluxated eyewells. And for a uh, aphasic uh, rehabilitation, we can do. And in unplanned conditions where you have a very large PC rent with no adequate sulcus or a large zonular dialysis where we cannot place a, a bag or a sulcus eyewells. Now, what extra instruments do we need? You don't need much of an extra instrument. I usually use a shepherd's forceps for a better stability. If you don't have a separate forceps, even a McPherson can do. For the enclavation of the uh, iris tissue into the claw, I use a, a reverse Sinsky hook or a rod. Even if that's not there, Sinsky hook also can do that job, but with a slight uh, manipulations. Now, is this technique very difficult? Not at all. It is a very simple technique with a very minimal learning curve. Coming to the procedure, in a vitrectomized eye, I always prefer to do uh, the side ports first. And the uh, main incision can be either a temporal or a uh, superior section. The, it can be either a corneal or a scleral section. I always prefer to do a superior corneal section because in a scleral section, the AC might tend to collapse more than when compared to a uh, corneal section. And also to save the superior conjunctiva if needed for a future trap. Once the IOL is placed, dial it into the position uh, in line with the side ports. And with the help of a reverse Sinsky or a rod, hold, um, the iris tissue can be tucked into the claw. And note the movement of the direction of the rod. It should be like vertical down and come out. It should not be a vertical up and down movement. So what I have learned from my mistake, especially in a vitrectomized eye, if, you, if we do the uh, side ports first before the main incision, the globe is very much stable. In the first video, the first the main port was done and later when I have done the side ports, the uh, eyeball was collapsing so much. So in any cases of colobomas or of microphthalmia, so because of the size of the uh, iris claw is slightly less, this can be placed in coloboma cases. And now what complications should I be dealing? If the technique is right, if the things are done in the right way, the less likely to have any complications. This is my 10 years post-op where the vision was fantastic. It was 6-6. Six, six. But definitely, it is not without any complications. There can be an ovalization of, uh, of the pupil. I don't say it is a complication. Probably, the patient might have a cosmetically uh, unhappy, but visual-wise, there is no uh, problem. Then there can be a pigment dispersion. Even if we have a pigment dispersion, not to worry. It can be taken care of with the topical steroids. Or if at all, uh, not, I mean, not uh, happening with the topical steroids, one can use a YAG uh, laser to disrupt the pigments. The site of enclavation, there can be a progressive iris uh, atrophy, which can be a risk factor for loss of enclavation. And if, the if there is a loss of enclavation, if only one haptic has lost enclavation, even the anterior segment person there, we can just get it into the AC and refix it. But if both the uh, enclavations are lost, we have to resort to the uh, vitro retinal surgeons who are always there to help us out. 
if things are done well, nothing happens. But if sometimes, if the claw gets fixed in these positions, that definitely causes a visual disturbance. And in such cases, not to worry, we can still disenclave the uh, iris claw and re-enclave it. Uh, disenclaving the iris claw is tricky, but it is not impossible. And the site of the PI is very, very important. As the name suggests, PI is peripheral arrhythmia. That means it has to be done in the periphery. That's it. No deviation from it. And in this case, my mistake was I have done uh, iridotomy or iridotomy. It is in the mid-periphery position. When I have dilated the patient, the optic edge was caught into the iridectomy site, and it went into a pupillary blood glaucoma. So one more, the biggest query what we always have is the uveal tissue is being handled. So is there an increased incidence of developing a CME? Theoretically, yes. But practically, I have hardly had a very few cases, about 1% to 2%. But yes, definitely, there is a, a chance of developing an Irvin gas syndrome. Probably it might not be just because the claw is hanging onto the iris tissue. There may be other so many reasons because it multiple surgeries also might have been done, one thing, or probably that eye has a propensity to develop a CME. And one more thing is uh, there can there will be a, I don't know if the video is playing. Um, there is a pseudophacodonosis. So because of the pseudophacodonosis, what happens is this will be inducing PVD. This PVD will induce HSTs and there can be an RD development. So this is where actually where an SFI will actually scores over an iris claw I will. But if an anterior vitrectomy is done properly, there, the contact between the vitreous and the optic edge is not there, so we are reducing the risk of the development of the PVD. So if the things are done well, things can, will not go wrong, and we'll have good results with the iris claw. Thank you.